Josh, we haven't had a chance uh, so far this season to speak with Alex, so it's tough to know from the outside looking in what the status of that relationship is. He's obviously been a good soldier for you guys filling, filling in where you needed him. Are there any conversations about finding a new home for him in this window, or is he somebody that you expect to be here for the long term? I think Alex is a pro. I mean, we've used him as a center back a lot this year. We've we needed that. Right? What he is, is he's a warrior. I think his time in Europe, his time in New York City has exemplified that. His time here has shown that. Um, when called upon to do just about anything, he's, he's up for it. And, um, you know, it would be nice getting him fit, getting him back out on the field in some capacity, hopefully this weekend. Um, but our plans are you know, the immediacy, the, the, the near future. I'm not, I'm not too, too um, interested in looking too far beyond what's, what's happening right now and getting this team in position for playoffs and position the top four to, to create a home field advantage in those playoffs. Well, there, the immediacy, there is a transfer window about to open this week. Is he somebody that's, that's on the brain in terms of being a factor in this transfer? I think, I think as a staff, um, with Sean, um, with Anthony, I think we, you know, I think all players should have some level of ability to be moved. There's a couple untouchables, but um, I think it's important that we, we take any option and every option to hear what, what's out there. We have to try to do what's best for our club, just like other, other teams have to do what's best for their club, but um, we have to try to get better right now. We have to set ourselves up to get better in the offseason, and um, you know, transfer windows are important. We probably missed, uh, missed the boat in, in the offseason due to some of our internal issues. Um, but we have to be extremely forthright right now in, in dealing with what our needs are, so we can center back, and um, you know, enhancing our group as best we can. But he hasn't expi explicitly requested a desire to move. Um, our players are, are, are focused on playing and competing this week. Um, he's focused on getting healthy and getting back out on the field. So from, from the standpoint of, of um, what they're interested at off the field, I, I, don't, I don't have too many conversations with players about that. All I can focus on is getting them ready to play a game now against Miami in Miami on the road. And, and we look to get our third win um, and on the top. Um, some of Wayne Rooney's uh, picks for All Star were a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, do you feel like any of our guys got snubbed and should should be there besides John? Um, of course, we got a we got a very good team with very good players. There's lots of talented players in the league. Um, one of the one of the roles of, of the head coach is obviously to navigate those those extra choices, so to speak. There's there's obviously commissioner picks as well. So I think all those things work hand in hand. But Wayne Rooney is. Um, has been an, extent, you know, an outstanding player. He's obviously got his team performing extremely well, and um, those choices are based on, on I'm, certain, I'm sure, certainly what he feels is necessary for that group to, to perform during the All-Star. So no names you want to put forward that should be out there? Yeah. What's momentum like after two big wins? Is that something you could feel in training right now? Yeah, I think it's over the course of the last you know, seven, eight games. We, we, we put together a decent body of work. There's been bumps along the way there, but... Um, strong performances, again, a real uptick in scoring goals. Um, the two shutouts, I think, um, really help us understand what it needs to look like in the back half of the season. You need to be a difficult team to, to break down and play against. Um, these were two very good teams. Houston, you saw what they did against LAFC. You've seen what Dallas has done to a number of teams. It's an in-state rival, so it wasn't hard to get up for. Uh, we we um, dominated both teams. We, we, we controlled the game from start to finish um, and you know, rewarded ourselves with very good goals and, and should have been more. So, you know, without getting too ahead of ourselves, those are the types of performances that we need from, um, from start to finish, from front to back. And, um, you know, consistency and performance, consistency in lineup, I, I think, led to those things. So we want to we keep getting guys fit, healthy, and strong. Uh, but ultimately, it's performing. If you can perform, you stay in the lineup. If you don't perform, you have some other guys that can help out. But um, it's, a, it's a collective effort as always. Austin now controls their own destiny when it comes to Copa Tejas. How are you guys feeling about being the driver's seat of that competition? Good. We feel good about it. <laughs> There's a scenario where you could lose against Dallas and still win the trophy month later. Um, but I don't imagine you want to do that, right? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. We'd like to... We'd like to to win, um, win Copa Tejas. I think I expressed that in the way we've talked to the players leading up to both those games. And um, it means something to us as a staff, as a team, and we know it means something to our fans and our own team. So we put a big emphasis on it, and the two games reflected that. We have to carry that emphasis and those performances into um, to the rest of the season. Let's get the parking lot ready, though. We'll hope so. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of the theme of MLS that everybody talks about. You, you rattle off a few good weeks in a row and you can climb right up the table. With that in mind, how big does this uh, first road match, you know, if after you know, in the second half of the season against Miami, how big is this match to continue what you guys are doing? I think it's important. It's a great point. Um, you, you, you hit it on the head. I think um, 
and we've talked about it. We did this last year. We went on a real good run, and obviously you can separate from the group real quickly if you if you, if you do well during the, this, this summer stretch, so to speak. But um, it doesn't come easily. There's no easy games in this league. Um, we, we have to be ready for a Miami team that's going to be uh, pretty pissed off about their last performance. Um, coming home looking to get three points, and they know they're getting a couple big-time players coming uh, soon, so they, they also need to be in position to, to make the playoffs. We, we have to do everything we can to squash their hopes and kill their spirit. And, um, you know, it doesn't come easy. We've got to go down there and perform, use the ball, try to hurt them, score goals, and be difficult to break down. But um, winning three in a row, going on the road and winning is, is huge in our league. It's, it's quite challenging. Um, if you win 17 games, I mean, there's 34 games in the league. If you win half your games, uh, you're making the playoffs. So we have, you know, we have metrics. You want to average two points at home, you want to average a point on the road. And we're, we're close on, on those metrics, but you know, we, we keep those things in mind. We want to go on the road and win. We, we don't go to, to, to just show up and tie. We, we want to go and win. We'll have every opportunity to go out and perform. And then kind of tying it full circle, you look at what Miami's obviously been doing, you know, in, in, with their transfers and the names that they're bringing in. Yeah. You couple that with, obviously, a, you know, a club like Austin, you guys are in conversations with people coming from, you know, the top clubs in the world. You know, it wasn't long ago that there really was not a lot of uh, conversation, not a lot of, you know, relationship that MLS would have with, with some of these biggest clubs in the world. What, what do you think has changed and how close, how much closer is it to where these clubs are kind of operating more in the same sphere than they used to? Uh, the viability of the league in the last three to five years, the exposure that we've gotten, the quality of our players, the quality of our coaches, and the quality of our players, the development of, of our young players and the development of the players that we, we now bring in at younger ages. I think is what is starting to set our league um, apart and, and actually grow us in stature. Um, we've brought in internationals, developed them, and moved them to Europe. Um, we've also utilized our academy space, which I think is extremely important to develop our players and sell to Europe. Uh, thus, I think we are now attracting top talent at, 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 at all ages, and we're attracting top coaches from, from all areas. And, those things help lend to um, to what our league has become. Apple deal uh, gives us more exposure, viability, more money, um, and it allows us again to attract players such as Messi. And um, you know, the league is growing rapidly. Um, I think the landscape has changed drastically in the last three to five years. And, and in turn, we, we have um, become a, a, a league of destination for many. And uh, you know, I think we also can't shy away from the fact that we're selling league. So that's also how you continue to build out the roster, and you can enhance your roster and transfer window. So for us at Austin FC, I think that's a big part of going forward. We have to have that ability um, as well as, as, as the utilization of, of all the, the, the normal mechanisms. But, um, you know, MLS is a strong league and it's only getting better. So it's, it's um, an honor to be part of it. After Saturday's goal, three goals, uh, Austin now leads the league in headed goals. Is that a validation of like the tactics you set out to uh, do in the beginning of the season? <laughs> Did I set out to score the most goals with our head? Um, probably not how you know I'd go about setting up tactics okay. um, to, to score on headers, but you know the idea is how we can create attacks, sustain attacks, get numbers into the attack, and, and basically pin opponents. And you know, I think these goals that you see us scoring are a lot like what we scored last year, and we scored 65 of them. So we know how to um, we know how to score goals. We know how to create attacks. Part of it is the discipline inside the game. Um, discipline of, of players in their positions and understanding what they're trying to achieve and then the execution. Ultimately these guys um, have good clarity as to what we're trying to do. Execution um, has has eluded us in the early part of the season but it's, it's good to see it now getting a little bit back in, uh, in where we'd like to see it. We also having more of our higher quality players available in, in their, their positions helps lend to that. So you know, I think that also enhances our ability to finalize actions. But, um, all of our players can score goals. You know, I think we've shown that throughout the year. Our back line does a good job contributing whether it's assisting goals. You know, the front three, five guys have both of the goals in this league. So um, we have to be dangerous in many ways. And um, I'm glad to see us scoring goals of late. And we, we need to continue that through the summer. You were talking about MLS being a selling league. Um, Danny Pereira is definitely a candidate for that. But obviously, the asylum citizenship status um, might be something that gets in the way of a European transfer. Where is he at with that? What's the availability and possibilities for him? I'm not sure. Um, okay. But Danny Pereira is an excellent player. Uh, again, his time here, his development inside Austin FC's two and a half years has been um, extremely good. And the opportunity for him to go play for Venezuela is one that does not come easily and one that he had a great passion about, and we were extremely excited for him. And any time a player gets to play for their national team, 
uh, it's a great, great honor. It puts you in a different, um, you know, certainly puts you in a different, a different spectrum as far as having the ability to track, you know, be more international. But you know, right now Danny plays for us. He's our starting center mid. He's one of the best in the, in the league in my eyes in, in his position. So um, if someone wants him, they're gonna have to come pay for him. And um, you know, we don't want to lose Danny. But um, you know, we know he has ambitions as well. And like I said, we we have ambitions to sell players also. But um, he's performing at a high level for us. So we don't plan on losing. All right, y'all. Hey, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks,